Here's the idea behind how to check if a differential equation is exact or not, and I'm going to demonstrate that with this function. And once again, we are talking about f of x, y, a function in terms of both x and y, because the solution to an exact equation is f of x, y is equal to a constant. And remember, when we're talking about exact equation, we are talking about the total differential of a multivariable function, like this, right? And we also have to talk about the partial derivative. Let's make some observation first with this function. At the end, I'll tell you what the check is. Right here, let's talk about the partial derivative first. We can first talk about the partial of f with respect to x. So this means x is the variable and y is just a constant, right? So for this term, we differentiate x squared, bring the 2 to the front, so over 2x. This is a constant, so it cannot state, just like 2x, y to the fourth power. And this is technically a constant in the x world. So when we differentiate this with respect to x, this is gone. This is what we have, right? Next, we can talk about the partial of f with respect to y. Now the y is the variable, x is the constant. Right here, for this term, let's bring the 4 to the front. And we have the x squared stays, and we subtract 1, so y to the third power. And the derivative of cosine y in the y world is minus sine of y, and we are done. As we can see, once we talk about the partial derivative with respect to x and with respect to y, most likely we'll end up with different answers, right? Hmm. Is there any kind of situation that they will be the same? Yes, the mixed partials are the same. What I mean by that is, this is what we get when we first differentiate the function with respect to x. And if we look at this and differentiate this with respect to y, likewise, we can differentiate this with respect to x. At the end, those are called the mixed partial, and the answers will be the same, under the condition that if the function is continuous. And let me show you. So right here, we already differentiate this with respect to x already. So now let's do the partial with respect to y. So let's see if I like it to you guys or not. <laughs> right here, the y is the constant. Bring the 4 to the front. 2 times 4 is 8. And we have x. Subtract 1, so we have y to the third power. And this is it. This is the partial of x with respect to x first, and then with respect to y. This is what we have. If you do this in a different order, if you do it with respect to y first, and do it with respect to x, let's take a look. For this term, bring the 2 to the front, so we have 8. Minus 1, so we have x to the first power. This stays y to the third power. The derivative of negative sine y in the x world is equal to 0. And check this out. This and that are the same. So here is the idea. Since we know that the mixed partials are the same for most of the functions, so this is the idea that we are going to utilize to check if a differential equation is exact or not. So let's take a look right here. Whenever you have a differential equation in this form, so we have m of x y times dx plus n of x y times dy is equal to zero. You see this right here looks so alike with the total differential form, right? Uh, what I mean by that is this, that I demonstrated last time for you guys. We hope that m of x, y, it does represent partial of f with respect to x. And we hope that n of x, y, it does represent that, right? And the way to check is, we're just going to look at the m, and we'll do the partial with respect to y. And we hope that this is the same as we take the partial of n with respect to x. So you see it's the other, right? When you see dx right here, with the m, you do the partial with respect to y. When you see the dy, you do the partial of this with respect to x. So you can see that the mixed partials are the same or not. So now let's check if this is exact or not. And remember, this is the m, but you should just remember that hopefully this represents a partial f with respect to x, right? You have to match with the total differential form. So partial of f with respect to x times dx, and this is partial of f with respect to y. And you have to do the mixed partial. That's the idea behind what I showed you guys earlier, okay? Here we go. I'm going to do the partial with this with respect to y now. So let's see. I will differentiate this with respect to y of that. 2xy e to the x squared. And as we can see in this case, the y is the variable, 
That means this is just y to the first power, everything else is a constant. When you differentiate y to the first power, you just get 1, and the rest stays, right? That means we'll have this, 2x e to the x squared, and that's it. On the other hand, let's differentiate this with respect to x. So right here we have e to the x squared minus 1 over y, and in our situation here, the x is the variable, y is the constant, we have to differentiate e to the x squared. e to the something, well, we repeat that first, e to the x squared. And we look at the derivative of this. The chain rule says we have to multiply by 2x. So we have 2x right here. The derivative of negative 1 over y in the x world is just 0. So you see, this and that are actually the same. That means, yes, this is exact. And when you know this is exact, you can use the procedure that I demonstrated in the previous video to solve. But let's look at another example to see if it's exact or not. Let's look at this one. As we can see, we have this with dx, right? That means this is the m of x, y. But I will suggest you guys remember it this way. You know this is with dx, and you have to remember that to check for exactness, we hope that this came from the total differential form, right? That means we hope this represents the partial of f with respect to x. And with that being said, we have to remember that we are going to check the mixed partial. This is with respect to x already, therefore we are going to be differentiating this with respect to y, okay? So I put this down inside for you guys, 3x plus cosine of y over 2, like this. And now let's just get to work. In the y world, x is the constant, so when we differentiate 3x, that's just 0, and we are going to be differentiating cosine of y over 2. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then the input stays the same, so we have y over 2 like this. However, the chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of y over 2 in the y world is 1 half, so let's multiply by 1 half in the front. Alright, now, for this part, it's with dy, that means Hopefully, this is partial of f with respect to y. And I'm going to see if there's such an f exists, right? So, to the mixed partial, I will differentiate this with respect to x. It's just the opposite. If you want to remember it like that, it's okay too. If it's dy, you are going to be differentiating this with x. Alright, let me put this down. We have negative 1 half x sine of y, okay, like this. In this case, x is the variable, y is the constant. So we are just looking at uh, x to the first power. The derivative of x to the first power in the x world is just 1. And the rest stays, right? That means we have negative 1 half sine of y. OK. Are the mixed partial the same? No, because here we have y over 2, and here we only have a y. As we can see, they are not the same, right? That means this equation it is not exact. Okay? So the procedure that I demonstrated earlier, so the procedure that I demonstrated in the previous video, so the procedure that I demonstrated before on how to solve an exact equation won't work for this one. And now the question is, how can we solve a differential equation that's not exact, such as this one? Keep in mind, we do have other methods, such as maybe this is linear, maybe this is separable, and in fact, there is another method called the special integrating factor that we can force something that become exact. And you also have to keep in mind that sometimes we cannot solve a differential equation in the first place, okay? Just like an integral. But anyways, uh, I'm going to demonstrate one more example, and that example is just going to be a small change of this equation. So I did change a few things in this equation, and now this is the whole new equation, and the whole point is to show you guys how to check for exactness, and now let's get going. Right here, this is with dx, and I'm going to label this as, hopefully there's a capital F, so that this represents the partial of F with respect to x. And to check if this is exact or not, I will be checking for the mixed partial. So that means I will be differentiating this with respect to y. So let's put that down right here. So I'll put this as 3x squared plus x times cosine y inside like this. In this situation, 
y is the variable, x will be considered the constant. Therefore, 3x squared is also a constant, this will be 0 when we take the derivative. And now, to differentiate this, we have cosine 1 right here, right? The x is the constant, we can put that down right here, and the derivative cosine is negative sine, so let's put this down as negative sine, and we have just 1 inside. And that's it. Next, we'll be looking at this, and let me put this down as partial f, hopefully there is such an f, right? This time is with respect to y, and I will have to be doing partial with respect to x to check for the mixed partial. This is with respect to y already. Now let me put this down. We have negative 1 half x squared, and we have sine of y. Okay. Here, x is the variable, y is the constant. So this and that stays. We have to focus on x squared. Well, bring the 2 to the front. 2 and 1 half cancel. That's all, right? And then just minus 1 to the power. All in all, we will end up with negative x and that sine of y right bring the power to the front minus one that's all and as we can see these two right here are indeed the same that means this right here it is an exact equation and here's a summary when we know a differential equation is exact it just means that it came from the total differential of some function for example now we know this is exact, right? That means we do know there is some function so that this represents the partial of f with respect to x. Likewise, this represents the partial of f with respect to y. When we have this situation, we can use the method I showed you guys in the previous video. And you can watch my other videos, I'll show you guys how to solve, solve, solve exact equations.